Well, greetings one and all, and welcome back to another video here with your host, Andrew. Today you join me for another pen perspective from the brand of Joya, and that one will be the Joya Pantanope Fiyama. So, there is a quite a lot to talk about with this pen. Now, originally I wasn't going to be doing a video today because I was experiencing some issues with a nib, but I have got the actual nib running again, so we are commencing with another video. So, sorry for any confusion with today's uh, pen perspective, but here I am doing yet another phantom pen perspective. So, please do join me over at the table where we will have a closer look. So today what I'm going to do is provide you some writing overlays as I'm not going to be doing any drawing. Okay, so let's have a look at the background. It was only last week I reviewed a pen from the Italian manufacturer Gioia. But for those that missed that video, I'll give you a brief background to the company. Gioia is based in Naples, Italy, which is also famous for many points such as pizza, opera, stunning landmarks, beautiful coastlines and most importantly for today pens well i mean pizza is right up there of course okay so Naple does enjoy a lot of wealth when it comes to producing fountain pens with two more of italy's famous brands being hosted there that being leonardo officina italiana and the mayora Nicuno pen company when one thinks about that for a second that is a lot of manufacturing for one city. In fact, I can't really think of any other city in the world that produces more pens than Naples, Wounds, well, respect of brands at least. So if you do know any, please do let me know in the comment section down below. As for this pen, it comes with several translations. Joy being joy, Parthenope translates to Parthenope, who was a Greek siren and basically means maiden voiced. And lastly, Fiamma, which is flame. The latter being the inspiration for the colour of this pen. Anyway, more on that later on in this video. I just love when companies celebrate local myths, folklore and such forth. Interestingly, Parthenope has links to Naples. What, you may ask though? Well, it just so happens to be the original name for Napoli, or Naples in English. Naples was settled by the Greeks in fact, so I think it's very fitting for Joy to celebrate this on the pen. Now some of you may be wondering, why the flame? Well, that is a great question indeed. So the resin of the new model was inspired by the Lampadorama Napatolina Half Marathon, which is one of the oldest sporting events in the shadow of Vesuvius, 5th century BC. It was a relay race which took place with torches and was basically in honour of the mythological mermaid Partenope, so we can see some fantastic connections here. That I think is just absolutely fantastic and as I say from the outset just calling it flame it probably doesn't give a lot of context so it would be quite nice maybe if uh, in the future some of these sort of fantastic elements about the inspiration for the names and the colours were more widely popularised. Anyway, that's what I'm doing for today. So without further ado, let's get on with today's pen perspective and we'll go straight to the unboxing. Okay, so I did cover this really last week, but there is um, an addition which I'd like to really talk about today and it's definitely worth mentioning. This pen does come equipped with a rollable kit. Yes, that's right, you heard that right here. You can convert this fountain pen into a rollable, should you wish. Okay, so I appreciate the fact that there are die-hard fountain pen fans out there, and they will probably scoff at this. But for rollable fans and those which just want a, a really versatile writing experience, this is fantastic. Right, so let's have a look at what's included inside of this box. Now if we open up the actual cardboard sleeve, you will find presented there the all usual care guides and a lovely hourglass piece of foam, which is essentially a nice little bed for your pen. Very nice indeed. Now I do want to reiterate that these boxes are very practical and as such, really easy to store. They also help keep the price of the pen down, which is something else I'd like to chat about later. 
Overall, the packaging is really practical and stylish, although I'd say that Leonardo has a slight edge when it comes to their presentation, but only ever so marginally. Right, now let's have a look at the practicality. Well, this is where things get interesting. As mentioned in the unboxing, the pen comes equipped with a rollerball kit. This is a very smart move, and unlike other companies that I know of, having an interchangeable system in place to convert your pen is a very conscious thought. Now, I know there are some die-hard fans out there which only swear by fountain pens, but for those that enjoy both systems, this is a fantastic selling point. But we are not done yet. Equipped also is a blind cap which allows you to feel the pen as a traditional piston filler. Of course, this is not an original concept. Both Leonardo and Mayora offer this system as well. How practical this is really depends on you. The pen posts well, but I would hesitate to do so because the weight of the cap really does offset the balance. Grip section is fantastic and comfy, and I also appreciate the length as well. My hand can grip onto the pen well, and in turn I find this very pleasant to write with. Threads do not impede on the comfort, and in general the weight of the pen is spot on. Lengthwise, this pen is decent and fits the crook of my hand nicely, giving a good weighted balance. Taking a look at the clip, we are going to have the same practical affair as the Alluria in which I reviewed last week. I really enjoy this design as it slips into my shirt pocket with little fuss, although the weight of the pen does weigh down my pocket just a little bit more, which is a bit of a shame. In terms of the filling mechanism, we have a cartridge converter, which totally makes sense, especially when the main party trick is being able to exchange the section for a rollerball. So, when we consider all these points, the asking price is extremely reasonable. Okay, now let's have a look at the design of the pen. Okay, so both the Illyria and the Partenope have very similar design cues, but there is one major and a few subtle differences. Firstly, if we have a look at the cap, you'll notice we have a beautiful logo adorned on top of the actual cap. This is very stylish and something that I'd like to see the Illyria adopt. Of course, that may impede on the cost. Casting your eye down a little bit, we have a beautifully etched design of Naples. Or well, I believe it is to be of Naples. I do believe this could be CNC etched rather than wax cast, but either way it does look unique and I enjoy how it complements the flame-like resin. This isn't something you see generally on pens of this price, and again, this separates a pen from the rest of the Naples brands. Looking more closely at the design of the resin, I am of two minds here. The yellows and the flames do look a little bit dull and I wish the resin had a little bit more depth of well, like the Illyria uh, Grota Azura. Still, when we look at the pen in all its glory, I really appreciate the reds and oranges. It really does marry up quite nicely with the gold trim of the pen. In terms of the trim, we are missing a couple of cap rings which was on the actual Illyria range, but we have got a fantastic clip which goes almost down to the length of the cap. Okay, so if we have a look at the blind cap now, this is coming in black and some people might argue that it would look better in the actual material from the rest of the barrel, but I think when you uncap the pen, it does match quite well with the grip section. Now I do have some of Jonathan Brooks' golden rule and I am going to see if I can get that produced on a Partenope as well. So watch out for that review coming soon. Well, hopefully at least. <laughs> okay, now let's have a look at the writing and drawing experience. Well, this pen unfortunately exhibited issues out of the box. It just didn't want to write despite flushing the pen out several times and using some fairy liquid. Having said that, I did run my finger over the breather hole and down to the end of the tines, and this seems to have resolved the issue. So hopefully it will keep going. As I have done a review only last week on this pen, I will keep this section brief. It is good, and like in the previous review, we have another Yovo nib, this time a 1.1 stub, which is relatively smooth with a light scratch on the nib, but it still offers fantastic line variation. I wouldn't say it's my favourite stub nib, but it's still a decent writing experience. Right, now let's take a quick look at the rollerball. 
One thing I have noticed is that there is a sheath on top of the rollable section, which I am guessing should come off, otherwise I'm not entirely sure how one would change the filling system. But in terms of writing with this pen, it does flow well and writes as one would expect from a rollable. Okay, so now let's have a quick look at the customer service. As mentioned in last week's video, the customer service is quite excellent. Since doing last week's review, I have been in contact with Joy to see if they'd accept some blanks to do a custom pen, and much to my delight, they have agreed. Their response time is decent and certainly takes on board feedback. Now one thing which I did mention in last week's video was the fact that the pen was friction fitted into the actual section which would make cleaning a bit of a pain. I did feed this back to Joya and I am delighted to say that they are trying to work on this issue by providing a nib housing opposed to having one which is friction fitted which is the standard current version which in turn will make the pen a lot easier to clean out so I'm very much looking forward to that. Okay, so I have got some final thoughts on this pen, so let's go over to that section now. Okay, so apart from the fact that the pen didn't actually write properly outside of the box, and this isn't the first pen which I've had from Joya which has exhibited this issue, at least their customer service is there and are very friendly and very helpful in terms of trying to get the pen to write, and I have to say that is really quite a blessing. Okay, now Joya really are going to become a upcoming brand, I think, within the next few years. Their designs, customer service and pricing are just on point. Married to the fact that they seem to accept custom blanks from customers, this does go a long way in terms of building community within their brand. In respect to this pen, having a cartridge converter goes also a long way to giving you a very easy pen to maintain. The various design elements should also be taken into consideration and all look very, very beautiful. Now, this pen does offer quite a lot of bang for your buck. £160 goes a long way with this pen, especially considering when you're looking at other pens within the Italian market. Okay, lastly I want to just thank Grand Vision Pens again for kindly loaning this pen out for review and I will gladly see you in another video. Till then, stay safe and goodbye for now.